Okay, so we're going to talk about the concept of entailment. And this is very important when we're characterizing validity. It um, is a way of cashing out the idea that some sentence follows from, logically, some other set of sentences. So it's a way of understanding what logical consequence is and what, um, what it means to say that something follows from, logically, something else. Um, so what we're going to do is we'll, we'll just give a rough overview of, of how to understand entailment. So as we've seen, it's a relationship between a sentence and some set of sentences. So for a valid argument, what we'll say is that a conclusion is entailed by the premises. So in order to understand whether premises entail a conclusion, um, we first think of the premises as a set of sentences and the conclusion as some other sentence. So we will have already engaged in our argument analysis. We will have already uh, figured out you know, what the conclusion is, what the premises are, what the assumptions are, and so on. And then what we'll do is we'll treat the premises as a set of sentences. And a set just means a collection collection of sentences, and we'll treat the conclusion as, as a sentence by itself. So how do we determine whether one set of sentences entails another set? So here we're going to call the set of sentences sigma, so this is the Greek, the uppercase Greek letter sigma, and that's going to be the name of the set of, prem of, of sentences that we're going to identify as premises. And so what we're going to do is we'll try to determine whether one set of sentences entails another set. And how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do first is we take a look at this set sigma, the set of premises. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to join all of them together with ands. So we're going to string all of the members of the set together to form one huge sentence. And this is going to be a conjunction, conjunction of um, all of the members of the set sigma. And they're going to be conjoined. Conjoined means join them together with and. So here's our set sigma right here. And it consists of this sentence, this sentence, and this sentence. We're going to join them all together with ands. And we'll end up with this sentence. So here, Lubbock is in West Texas. And pigeons love cities. And red is a color. And so this, this set then is converted into one big long sentence. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask whether this conjunction entails some other sentence. Um, and let's say the in our case, here's the sentence. So there doesn't look like there's any relationship between what's going on in sigma or in the sentence built out of sigma and this. So intuitively we'd say, well, of course it's not the case that horses are larger than dogs is entailed by this sentence here. So how do we show that? So what we're trying to do is to see whether horses are larger than dogs is entailed by sigma. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we test for that? So what we're going to do is something sort of funny. We're going to negate this sentence, horses are larger than dogs. We're going to negate it. Negation just means denying it. Okay, so we're going to say it's not the case that horses are larger than dogs. Now we have the 
members of the set sigma conjoined with ands. Here it is. And then, interestingly, what we're going to do is to see whether when you put this negation of horses is larger than dogs, horses are larger than dogs, together with the conjunction of the members of sigma. So once we join them together, we ask, do we have a contradiction? So if we join these together, these two things together, do we end up with a contradiction? If so, then we'll say that sigma entails that horses are larger than dogs. Okay, so one more time. The test that we're looking at here is does the set sigma when joined with the negation of the conclusion, generate a contradiction? If so, then we say that the, the conclusion is entailed by the set sigma. Okay? So what happens when we join together with the and, the negation of the conclusion plus the set sigma? Well, this is what happens right here in green. Lubbock is in West Texas, and pigeons love cities, and red is a color, and it's not the case that horses are larger than dogs. And on inspection, we see that it's not a contradiction. That's not a contradiction. And so what this means, then, is that the truth of the members of sigma doesn't entail, does not entail, the sentence, horses are larger than dogs. Okay? So... Horses are larger than dogs is not entailed by sigma. How do we know that? We negated horses are larger than dogs. We observed that the negation of horses are larger than dogs does not contradict sigma. If that's the case, then horses are larger than dogs does not follow from sigma. Okay, so while the re entailment relation then doesn't hold for horses are larger than dogs, it would hold for this funny sentence. Pigeons love cities or Paris is in Ireland. So this is a, is a, is a sentence, is a proposition that is true when it's true that pigeons love cities and Paris is in Ireland. It's also true when pigeons love cities and Paris is not in Ireland. It's also true when it's not the case that pigeons love cities and Paris is in Ireland. It's only false when they're when both parts are false. Okay, we'll look more at uh, at or later on. Okay, so to see why this whole thing follows from sigma, so here's sigma. Sigma entails this. To see why, what we can do is first we check whether the negation and the negation of this guy and the conjunction of the members of sigma leads to a contradiction. So what we have here is, here's the negation. It's not the case that pigeons love cities or that Paris is in Ireland. And, of course, we know that this is logically equivalent, or we will know. If you don't know, you will soon. We know that this is logically equivalent to this. It's not the case that pigeons love cities, and it's not the case that Paris is in Ireland. Or, more intuitively, Paris or pigeons don't love cities, and Paris is not in Ireland. And we can see right away that there's a contradiction. Why? Because, remember, this was the conjunction of the members of Sigma, right in the middle of it, pigeons love cities. So conjoining pigeons love cities in Paris is not in Ireland with Lubbock is in West Texas and pigeons love cities in red is a color gives us the following contradiction. Here's the contradiction, the whole thing. So pigeons don't love cities and pigeons love cities. 
and Paris is not in Ireland, and Lubbock is in West Texas, and Red's a color. And this sentence then contains the contradictory assertion that pigeons love cities and pigeons don't love cities. And this is enough to say that our original sentence is entailed by sigma. And we'll look a lot more at these kinds of um, these kinds of things later on.